Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. This segment is brought to you by BuildOut. If you're a commercial broker, check out buildout.com for marketing your listings. And today we're talking about the office market. Please welcome my next guest. It's Doug Ressler. Doug is Director of Business Intelligence with Yardy Matrix. He's joining us on the phone today. Doug, thanks for being with us. Michael, thank you very much. Well, Doug, as we say, we're talking about the office market, and I think you know a lot of our uh, audience may be a little concerned about demand for office properties moving forward. We keep talking about, we keep hearing about uh, companies using less space, people working at home, and uh, so what do you think? What do you think the trends? What do you guys see as the trends, and maybe the forecast for demand for office properties moving forward? Well, we think that the trend is going to continue to be positive right now uh, through the second quarter. Uh, it was a little bit flat, but third quarter is starting to pick up, and we see that the uh, jobs related to the continued growth in office using jobs is actually going to continue to improve. So it gives us a lot of good uh, positives, especially uh, in the suburban cores. We see that uh, the U.S. suburban vacancy rate is near pre-recession low. So we like markets in, uh, like, um, you know, the uh, – Columbus area and uh, the Des Moines area, some of the secondary and tertiary markets, Detroit, Memphis, uh, we see a tremendous amount of significant growth uh, in new construction uh, in those particular markets. That doesn't necessarily say that the urban markets are going to be at a loss because Denver is unique, and uh, it's one of the strongest markets that we see right now in terms of office constructions. And uh, it's the most, it's the third most active submarket in terms of office construction uh, in the nation, along with Seattle and Northern Virginia. That's great. So you, th- the forecast is good. You expect job growth to be strong. So what's that mean for occupancy and rental rates? What do you see as a trend in a forecast there? Slight positive up uh, uh, for occupancy and for rental rates, uh, because we see that there's a limited amount of supply in some of those markets, and uh, we see the biggest metro office uh, falls could be in some areas like Trenton and New Jersey, but for the most part, the balance of the other markets is continuing uh, growth uh, in terms of um, common industry experts, uh, not only us, but uh, elsewhere expect that uh, vacancy rates will continue to fall or occupancies to increase based on the uh, significant job growth and office using jobs. It's one of the key drivers that's going to occur in both suburban and urban areas. Yeah, and that's great news, right? If you're a owner of office buildings, or you're an investor in the office sector. So, Doug, what do you think about investment sales? Do you think that uh, we're going to see what's on it kind of volume there? What do you think you're, we might see for cap rate trends? We think cap rates are going to remain low despite the rising interest rates. We only see one more uh, Fed uh, interest rate uh, adjustment. And uh, the share of total rolling four-quarter office retail industrial volume net lease transactions increased 19.4%, 19.4% from 2008 to th- 2017. So we think that's going to continue. And uh, the increase in federal funds have not caused any sustained increase in long-term interest rates. They've continued to narrow in uh, trade range. But uh, the impacts on, on cap rates in the net lease market has been minimal. So we see that... Uh, Right now, the spread between cap rates and the 10 years remains stable, between 3 and 4% over the past few years, and it's going to remain above the 1.5 points to 2.5 point range that we've seen prior to the recession. Interesting. We're talking with Doug Ressler with Yardy Matrix about the office market. And, and Doug, there's been some pretty nice profits taken uh, by some of these uh, office investors. Uh, what do you see out there? Well, we see, uh, and we're still trying to go through the research right now. You're absolutely right. Some people have taken a pretty nice profit, and we think that the reason they're taking a pretty nice profit is that they're going to reengage where they have opportunities going forward. So sell now, then buy a little bit later with the profits that they've had in those areas that have a greater return potential. We've seen that in terms of Atlanta. Uh, we're seeing it in terms of Austin, and we're seeing it uh, in Boston, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So. Uh, we think that that's going to continue to occur. Those are large and, uh, you know, tech-centered uh, type of hubs. And uh, certainly one of the the big uh, elephants in the room is what's going to happen with Amazon and where they put their headquarters. 
Yeah, that's true. And there's been some pretty nice gains, some resale gains, where uh, companies bought an office building and then sold it. Uh, what's some examples that, uh, that might uh, surprise some people? Well, I think one of the things, uh, the examples, uh, first of all, GE, in terms of their Boston building, their headquarters building, actually uh, delayed completion of that uh, because the the local tax codes and governors uh, said that they could probably make better profit by delaying completion of that uh, headquarters building in South Boston. So you see that's occurring. Uh, you also see uh, areas uh, that uh, are being traded in terms of the Inner Harbor of Baltimore, especially with Sagamore development and some of the things that they're trying to do now uh, that are in uh, you know areas that uh, people don't necessarily look at uh, and see but have great uh, potential. Urban Union uh, recently completed a 290,000 square feet gold office building in Seattle and I think they traded for 269 million. That's 928 bucks a square foot mm -hmm. and it's in close proximity to the Amazon headquarters. Uh, so that's one that's probably people know about but there's also areas like I point out in Culver City, uh, LA, uh, Playa Vista which is uh, nearby in a Los Angeles submarket with tech companies, uh, that's also another good uh, property that uh, an area that attracts people. Well, great. Well, what would be your closing tip for owners or investors in the office sector? I think right now a closing tip is that we may remain very bullish. You know, uh, Yardy Matrix is in 66 markets and counting in terms of commercial office, and we're also in self-storage and residential, and we bring uh, a lot of uh, demographics and uh, analysts uh, information intelligence into the market. We're never satisfied, and we're always looking for, uh, you know, the best investment uh, for our providers and for uh, the people that buy our subscriptions. All right. Well said, Doug. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. And thanks for joining us out there on uh, iTunes or YouTube or Podomatic uh, show website. Uh, we're finding that our show is popping up uh, all over the world, all over Internet sites and everything. So wherever you're watching or listening, uh, thanks for doing so and uh, joining us. And uh, we also appreciate you following us and sharing the show and commenting uh, on the show and sharing it with your friends. And until next week, please join us next week. But until next week, be sure that you always... Lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show.